I always wanted to have a concession wagon. Boys and I bought this, but now that Dad's running for governor, we've turned it into the wagon we haul around the t-shirts and the buttons and the mustaches. He has style, he has pizzazz, and he's got the mustache. I'm not changing myself, not buying a bad hairpiece, not shaving off the mustache. I think Hoosiers like what's inside. It's your character that counts. My dad's a prankster, so and he likes to make people laugh. I don't think we need another politician who's wound a little too tight. I think it doesn't hurt to have somebody that realizes that there needs to be a little joy in the journey. The dog wagon is going with us as we drive all around Indiana. We're going to be crisscrossing the state and the north, the central, the southeast, and the southwest. And it's going to be a long year, but it's going to be exciting because Indiana's a great place. I think they're pretty excited. They've never really had this big experience at, like as a town because he used to run for state rep, but that I mean governor is a whole new level. Thank you. Okay. Hey man! So let me introduce to you our choice for the next governor of Indiana, our dad, John R. Gregg. Thank you, boys. It's a great day. It's a day that um, a year ago that I would never have planned on or thought would have been here. I really thought that um, I was done with uh, politics and would never have my name on a ballot again. San Bernardino was a wonderful place to grow up. When I was a kid, you watched the Andy Griffith show during the week and there were a lot of a lot of similarities. You know, you rode a bicycle from one end of town to the next. I uh, delivered newspapers as a kid. It's a sense of community that we all belong. And I look out here and I see many that help us make up this community. It's no different than growing up in a community like Indianapolis or Fort Wayne or Gary. It was that sense of knowing your neighbor and working together and pulling together. I have great pride in where I'm from, but I also have great pride in our Hoosier state. John loves everybody. It's always a real friendly kid. When I was in the legislature and we were tied 50-50, we had to get along. There wasn't any thinking about it because if we were going to pass any one piece of legislation, we had to have bipartisan support. It wasn't about who was a Democrat or who was a Republican. It was about ideas. There were either good ideas or bad ideas. There's no Democrat pothole or Republican potholes. There's only potholes. It seems like today that there's just a few voices being heard, and it all comes from Indianapolis down. It doesn't come from the bottom up. That's not the way things should work in government. That's not the way things worked in Sandberg, and that's not how they'll work in a Gregg administration. <laughs> At an early life, I learned that if you wanted an opportunity and you wanted to move ahead and you wanted things in life and you wanted to enjoy the American dream that you realized that education was key to that. But you know, if we're gonna change education, we right now are just listening to reformers and academics. But why don't we invite a school superintendent and that great public school teacher that all of us have had and a principal, and maybe even a couple students and, and some parents. I mean, we need to broaden that base. We need to prepare not just those children, but all of us need to be prepared as we continue on in a changing world and a changing job market. And I have the best job a person could ever have in 2003 and 2004. I was the president of Vincennes University working with almost a thousand faculty and staff. We help that university grow to offer four-year degrees. We help students become prepared for jobs for the future. We help the displaced and the unemployed also get jobs for their future. He's not a career politician. He's done this for some of his life and got out of it, came home with us, and now he's decided to get back into what he loves doing. I'm coming to this as a father and an educator who happens to know how the state and the capital and the legislature and the state budget know how it all works. So today, from the only place I've ever called home, Indiana, I'm announcing for governor. 
I'm not coming to this race as an insider who's all caught up in the melodrama of Washington, D.C. I'm not a career politician. And sadly, I don't even have Washington, D.C. experience. But I do have experience in Indiana. I'm running for governor because in these tough economic times, we have to do a lot to make Indiana competitive in a global economy. It's jobs. It's jobs at the beginning of the campaign. It'll be jobs at the end of the campaign. It'll be a good education to help people prepare for jobs. And it's all about the economy. We are the largest per capita manufacturing state in the union. And it seems like every time you turn around Washington, D.C., shipping jobs to India, China, Mexico, and that's got to stop. I'll concentrate on Indiana businesses. We will require state contracts to go to state businesses because Indiana cannot afford to surrender one more job to a foreign country. Do you see Vern and Linda Tincher here? I always told John that I wanted him to run for governor while I was still alive. And he waited until the last, because I was 81 last, last month, and I said, let's get it done. And I want to tell you, this campaign's going to be a little different. We're going to have some fun. In addition to having fun, it may be my name on the ballot, but we are in this together. We are all going to have to work so that we can win. We can do it. It starts right now. I am honored to be able to call so many of you friends. I'm excited about this campaign, so let's get to work. Thank you. Yeah!